Hello and welcome to another Excel VBA tutorial. Um, we are going to change gears a little bit. We are going to use VBA to connect to an access database and then pull some data from that database. So this is really kind of, again, using two applications. We have Excel, we have access. We want to pull in that information using VBA. Um, and make it this kind of seamless experience for the user maybe in something like that. So overall goal, we're going to keep it simple, is we want to take all the columns of information in this table and pull them into our Excel spreadsheet. So, you know, there's like I don't know, 10 or 15 columns or something like that, something like that. Um, so the goal is to create a query, take all this information, and then put it into my Excel spreadsheet. So I actually have a working one. So ideally, this is kind of what it's going to look like. It would be something like this. Okay, so it pulls it in nice and clean, just like we like it. Um, and we can see all the columns and stuff like that. So pretty useful. I, I definitely work with databases a lot. I work in data science. And so naturally being able to just seamlessly connect to a database is always encouraged. And uh, we always want to make sure it's easy and everything like that. Okay. So uh, with that being said, though, you want to go into your Visual Basic Editor. I already got it open, obviously. Um, and then I'm going to go to my little tutorial module. So you want to make sure you insert a new module. So you right click over at the uh, project window and then you go to insert and then module. And then from here, <clears throat> um, we actually have to enable a lot object library. Uh, you don't have to technically, but in this tutorial, I'm going to be doing it what I consider to be the more appropriate way, I guess. I don't think it's appropriate, but I just think it's going to be a little bit easier to work with because we don't have to deal with connection strings as much and, and things along that nature. And so we'll take advantage of this object library and then take the built-in properties and methods of it that will allow us to kind of just more easily work with our data sources because really this object library can be used with Access, SQL, all sorts of different databases. You could even use it with like Snowflake and, and things like that. Uh, so we're gonna go over to our tool section of our ribbon bar. We'll click it down to references. And then from here, the, uh, the library that you are looking for in this example is the Microsoft ActiveX Data Objects 6.1 library. So if you scroll down to Microsoft uh, ActiveX, you will see there's a ton of different libraries. Uh, each one of them, well, some of these ones, these are just earlier version ones. I haven't had to work, I think, with the multi-dimensional ones or the record set ones, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll explore them a little bit and I'll, I feel like there's something more meaningful there. Um, I'll definitely create a tutorial on it, but uh, in this example, all you're gonna want is you wanna like, get sure, you wanna make sure that you get the Microsoft ActiveX data object library. Uh, the latest version that you have. Um, it should be 6.1. Most people I, I've encountered have all been on 6.1. So you just want to make sure you check the box. That will enable it. And then from here, you are good to go. Let's write our subroutine. So we're going to say sub export data to Excel. And then from here, like every other video, we're going to declare our variables. So declare variables. And it's, these are going to be mostly um, object variables and a couple regular variable data types. So the first one is going to be our connection object. And so this is kind of our, our way of talking with the database, if you think about it. So it's our connection to it. Um, and so this one is going to be an A D O D B dot connection object. So that's the connection object. And then our next one is going to be a record set. And so this is kind of like an individual record inside of our database or collections of records, if you want to call it that as well. And so this one is going to be an ADODB dot record set object. The next one is going to be called connection command. And so this one is also ADODB. And then this is a command object. We can think of a command object in a sense as uh, kind of passing through the actual query, uh, specifying the, the type of query that it is, and then actually executing it. So this is kind of our command interface, if we think about it, that will go and actually execute the commands that we pass through it. At least that's kind of how I like to think about it, and I think it kind of puts it more into context. But the reason I say it's kind of our command is 
it has the execute method associated with it. So when we actually want to execute our query, we have to go to our command object. Then the next one is going to be called column names. And then this one is, again, ADODB. And then it's going to be the fields object. Um, for some reason, IntelliSense does not rec recognize it, but it is technically allowed if you read the documentation. It's all good to go. These are just simply the column names or the, um, the fields of the actual uh, database. Again, it likes to kind of just jump ahead and thinks like, oh, well, you mean something else. No, we mean fields in this example. And then the next one is the data source. This is just going to be a file path. And so for because of that, I'm just going to declare it as a string. And then our final one is called int loop. And this is going to be used for a loop that we're going to do at the end of our code. OK, so with that, we're all good to go. The first thing we want to do is we want to define the data source. And by defining the data source, I mean we need to define the path to the data source. And so because I'm working with an access database, really what I want is I want the actual path. And so if you look up here at the top of my access database, you'll see C, users, Alex, desktop, financial data, and then the extension at the end. This is your data file path. So this is the source. So you want to take that one and then just plop it in to um, your VBA editor. And if I go, I don't know if it will copy path to clipboard. I don't know if it's going to copy everything, but we'll try it out. Usually I just type it if I'm being extra safe. Okay, and then so with this one, oh, perfect, works fine. Okay, so yeah, you can copy it there and then just paste it in. So now we have our data source in a sense. We have a path at least to our data source. Now we need to create our new objects. Oh. Sorry, I need to do double quotation marks. So now we're going to create a new connection object. So we're going to create a new connection object and a new command object. Now, you could technically, if you wanted to, create the command object later, but I like to just do it kind of at the beginning with everything else. And so the first one is we're going to set, because these are object variables, we're setting them. We're going to set the connection object equal to a new ADODB dot connection object. And then the next one is going to be connection command. And then this one will be a new ADODB dot command object variable. And then from here, we're going to create a new connection. We can think of it as plugging in to our database. And so we're going to say create a new connection. And we're going to say with our connection object, because this is how we're going to go make that connection, we're going to set different variables about it, or sorry, different properties about this connection object. This is why I like working with this object library, because now all I have to do is I can now just go, oh, and set the different properties instead of having to create a connection string. To me, I feel like it's worth it, and I think it's a little bit more optimized. I think it runs a little bit faster, but it could just be me. Now our provider is basically like kind of like our API that we're going to use to plug into it. And so it's microsoft.ace.oledb.12.0. Really all this is, is this is just for access databases. So this is for the star ACCDB databases. So for access databases, this is kind of like the API for that database. And then we're going to define our connection string. Well, it's just our data path. And so that's going to be the data source that we defined up above. And then we're going to open a new connection by calling the open method. And that's it. We've created our connection. It's as simple as that. It's really straightforward. That's why I kind of, like I said, I, I like working with this library. It just makes it super easy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to now take our command object and then pass through, well, not really pass through, but what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, here's a command object. What do you want the active connection to be with this command object? So really what we're doing is we're setting the active connection for our command object. A lot of people kind of like, wait, well, I have to do this again. Again, it's kind of this own little separate object. And so we have to tell that object, hey, which connection 
should I be working with? Because technically, if you wanted to, you could have more than one connection to a database. And so this command object has to know which connection are you talking about? And so we're going to say connection command dot active connection. So the property, and then we're going to set it equal to our connection object. So this one right up here, because this is right now our active one and our only one at this point. And so now that it has an active connection, we can define the query and the type of query that it is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to define the query and query type. Ooh, type. Okay, and so we're going to take that command object. We're going to go into the command text, and this is the query. So what is our query? Well, it's to select all columns from actuals underscore capital. And I'm picky. I'm going to make this all uppercase. Perfect. So that is our query. And then this one too is we're now going to take our connection command object and we're going to specify the command type. And this one is a command text. So I'm passing through the text query. And then from here, um, we're going to execute that particular query and it's going to return something back to us. So what we're going to say is, like, okay, you execute that query. It's something is returned back to me. Where do I want to put that stuff that was returned back to me? Because at this point, we're going to get data back. Well, I want to store it in that record set object variable. So this one right up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, so just set the record set object equal to the connection command and then simply execute that query that we've defined. And so when it executes it, information is going to be sent back to us and it's going to be stored in this object variable. So this one is we're executing, executing the query. And then we're also going to get the column names. Now they make this really easy for us. In fact, it's super easy. All we got to do is we're going to set our column names object equal to the record set, so the actual data itself, and then there's a property called fields. And so this is simply the column names. So now we've taken that record set and we've gotten the column names from that record set and we've stored it in another object variable called column names. And so from here, now that we have the data, we've got the column names and all that kind of fun stuff, we can now start putting it into our Excel spreadsheet. And this is going to be broken into two parts. The first part, I want to populate my headers, and then I want to put my records below my headers. And so what I'm going to first do is I'm going to populate my headers. And for this one, I'm going to use that loop that I was talking about in the beginning. So I'm going to say int loop. So this was that little integer variable that I defined up above. And I'm going to say, okay, for int loop equals zero, two, we're going to go into the column names object and we're going to count the number of fields there are. And because we're starting at zero, I'm just going to do one less than that. So do that many loops. Go to the next one. And then I'm going to populate the cells that I need to populate. And so I'm going to say, go into the cells, go into row one go into, well, in this case, the column is going to depend on which point we are in the loop. So just simply take the int loop and then add one to it. And then I'm going to uh, set that value equal to the column. Uh, what is it? Sorry. Column names. We're going to go into the item property and then we're going to go get the item that we are in the loop. And then I just want the name of it. So this is a collection of, ob of objects. We're going to go get a particular item from that collection. And then we're going to get the name property of that particular item. And we're going to set that name equal to whatever cell we are on in this loop, if that makes sense, hopefully. But we have to start at zero. That's the important part. And then from here, now we can dump the record set. So dump the record set. And this is like five times easier than the one that we just did up above. 
we just go to range A2, so the one that's right below row one, and we go and do the copy from record set, and then we just pass through the record set. So Excel already has a built-in method called copy from record set, and all you have to do is you just have to pass through the data basically. So really all we're doing is we're passing through the data colon equal. That's really all we're doing. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to put those ones down. So we're just passing through the data and the data is the record set. And then from here, we can close the connection. So that's important to do. You wanna make sure you close that connection after you're done working with it. Otherwise you might have an open one that you don't necessarily want left open. And so we're just gonna call the close method. And that's it. Perfect, okay. And then if I run this, Let's see what we get. Works perfectly, just like we were expecting. So it pulled in all the information from our database really seamlessly, and you just witnessed how quick that was. That was like, I don't even think that was a second. It was like a millisecond. Bam, just like that. That's why I love doing this. It makes it so easy, and you could even, if you wanted to, if you were really kind of ambitious, you could technically build your query from the Excel spreadsheet if you wanted to. You could have some user inputs where you could specify maybe a table, maybe a column, stuff like that. And then if you wanted to, you could make it a little bit more dynamic for your user. And then they don't have to kind of build the query themselves. They can just go and get the data for you know for them. Uh, you know, got to got to determine if that works for you. But I've done that in the past sometimes because some people when they hear building queries, they get a little bit scared to say the least. Um, but that's definitely an avenue you could go down. But with that being said, that concludes today's video. If you have any questions about, you know, how to work with an access database using VBA, uh, you know, anything along that line, please make sure to put those questions down in the comments below. And if you have any ideas for other videos that we should be covering, you know, please also put those down in the comments. We're always open to hearing you know, new ideas and stuff like that. Also, if you could make sure to like the video, we always appreciate that support. And then if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos on a whole host of topics. We have so many topics to cover and I feel bad for the Python people because I have been lagging on that one, but there was one I was supposed to be doing and then I realized that in IntelliSense, it's not working the way it's supposed to be working. So I actually have to read the documentation as I'm writing it because it's not going smoothly. And then the YouTube API one, um, been running into some hiccups with that one as well, which was of course not very fun to say the least. Um, but yeah, thanks again for watching guys. We will see you in the next video.